One of the driving forces of any mix that you use as a reference comes down to the type of snare that is pushing the song. It has to be unique and identifiable. And today, I have a very special guest with me. Hi, I'm Mike Plotnikoff. I'm happy to be here with Miami and uh, Joey Sturgis Tones. And uh, we'll be going over how to mic a snare drum. Mike, you want to let them know a little bit about who you are and some albums that you've worked on? Yeah, I've been engineering, uh, recording and mixing for over 30 years now. Started at a studio in Vancouver called Little Mountain Sound. That's where I came out of and been now in Los Angeles for over 20 years and got to work with some of the biggest artists in the industry. You know, everybody from Aerosmith, ACDC, Cranberries, In Excess, Papa Roach, My Chemical Romance, Flyleaf, All American Rejects. Uh, right now, actually in the studio with uh, Three Days Grace, doing a fourth record now with them. And yeah, you know, there's plenty more. One of my favorites that he didn't actually mention uh, okay. is um is Beautiful Oblivion by Issues. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this know which album I'm talking about. To me, hearing the snare tone on that album is one of the most identifiable in the genre. And the second that I heard it, I knew that it was going to be very important for my references. One thing about drums is everyone gets in their minds that if you don't have all kinds of expensive gear, that you're not going to be able to do this. And the reality is it's about the technique. Of course, Mike has tons of gear, you know? You can tell that he likes buttons. And on the subject of like button, make sure that you push it, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when we upload new content. My transition game is still crazy. By the end of this video, you'll have a much better idea of how you're supposed to mic a snare drum as well as learning a trick that I learned from Mike from being in the studio here with Three Days Grace that I've never seen before in my life. And actually something that I'm probably gonna start doing from this day forward. Yeah, so I'll give everybody that uh, secret that I use, uh, you know. So yeah, stay tuned to the end of the video and uh, I will reveal it. Hey all you engineers out there, I'm here at West Valley Studios and I'm gonna show you guys how I personally mic a snare drum and hopefully these will help you in getting a good snare drum in your recordings. And like Miami said earlier, it is very important to get a good snare drum sound it will make your whole recording and your mix sound great in the end or it could also ruin your mix in the end by not having a good snare drum just since it holds down the middle part of the song. I have here a Pearl reference kit which is uh, our good friend Joe Ricard and this snare drum is also used in the drum shots. One of the same snares we used and here I just used 257s and honestly I've tried miking snares with every type of microphone there is. I even used a uh, C12 on a on a snare drum and I've used an Elam 251 and I know some people are probably going to go, oh my god I can't believe you, you put one of those mics on a snare drum but yes I have just to see how it sounds and honestly I find for the type of music I do for rock music, more metal, hard rock, the 57 on the top and 57 on the bottom always works, always sounds good in the kit, sounds good in the final mix and again because everything I do I'm recording a live drummer and I do use samples but I always want to lead with the main kit. The samples are always just for support in the kit. But anyways what I like to do for the top snare is usually I like to mic it not not like inside the ring but outside the ring like an inch away and I try to capture half of this half of the mic if you would cut the the mic in half I like to cap half of the the rim and then the other half pointing here so that way because most drummers hit the do a rim shot now if I'm doing a take and I, I try to keep it maybe like an inch inch away because I, I like to have a little bit of breathing room. I like the snare to breathe a little bit. So let me be exact. I'd be I'd be super precise when I'm miking this with the band with a band. I would probably have it kind of at this angle with about an inch away and like you can see half is pointing at the center of the of the snare and the other half is pointing at the rim. So now I'm getting the rim shot from the stick and then also the middle of the snare sound. The bottom mic will always be a little bit of an angle. I don't like it pointing straight up because I find I get like a weird bottom end in the snare. So I kind of point it at an angle, like 45 degree angle. And obviously to, to the snares on the bottom. 
and that's my personal preference of miking the snare drum. Now, if the drummer is not going to hit the rim, because on some songs they won't be hitting the rim, then I will change the mic position and I will move the mic up and point it more like that to the middle of the snare if there is no, if, if the drummer is not going to hit a rim shot. So really super simple in, in that way of, of how I mic. Now in the tuning of the snares, usually I like my snares quite low in the mix because I find if I tune them too high and I know a lot of people like crack and, and the drum, but I try to find the crack out of more by EQ rather than tuning it too high and then it gets in the way in the cymbals and stuff. But I tune it pretty low, the snare, with moon gels. And then another trick I use, which Miami was talking about, which I like to use and I don't know why it works, but I use a piece of yellow lined paper, just like this, very simple. And I just lay it on the snare drum. I might put one of these moon gels just to hold the corner down here, but I, I let it flop around and whatever the paper does on the snare, it just takes out all the ring, all the weird overtones, and it always sounds good in the room mics, it sounds good in the cymbal mics, it sounds good in the tom mics. Like I was saying before, I don't really like to gate my toms too tight, I always leave a little bit of the toms in there, and then duplicate the tom tracks where I do edit them tight, where I take all the noise out. But uh, they're, they're always in there, so everything in the kit is always in the tom mics, if that makes sense. And the paper to me just, you know, all my snares have it on. It, 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 when we come to mixing overdubs, the snare always just sits perfectly in the mix. And then also, I also like to use this, which is just a piece of this cut out. If you guys could see, so I did a little piece. And what I'll do is get this over this over the mic so I don't get any hi-hat in it. So I'll find a way obviously so it doesn't get in the drummer's way but it'll go over over the over the snare drum or over the mic I should say if I'm and that gives me just a lot better isolation keeps a lot of the hi-hat out of the mic. That way I could bring the snare up, EQ the top end into the snare drum without getting too much hi-hat in there. And it really works, it takes, you wouldn't believe how much of the hi-hat leakage it takes out of the snare drum. So really that's it in here, you know, pretty simple. Nothing really that special with the microphones. You know, anybody could get a 57. And like I said, that's on 99% of all the records I make is 57 top and bottom. Three days grace had to start recording, so I did the example at my studio. I have to say, that was absolutely mind-blowing. Never seen anything like that before. Um, what even gave you the idea to do something like that? Well, I always felt like the, the ring of the snare drum in the final product always got in the way of the vocal. So I had to figure out a way, because sometimes when you're miking drums and you're just there getting the drum sounds at the beginning, it all sounds good when there's a ring in the room or you know the snare is wide open. And it sounds good because there's no other instruments. But once you start doing all the overdubs and you start getting the vocals in and you start getting the mix in, then you start putting the cymbals up and you start getting, you know, the ring from the snare and all that. So I had to try to figure out a way to a way to get it out. And I, I used to use moon gels and then, you know, there was the rings people had. And then I just tried a piece of paper one time and I'm going like, wow, that sounded pretty cool. And it just, the way it floated on top of the snare drum and it was... I don't know, I just gave it a, a tone that I liked and so I've been using that and that's one of my secrets for the snare. And then I, I, I'll worry about a sample later, but at least I know then the snare sounds good in the room mics, sounds good in the cymbal mics, even if I have the toms up a little bit because I don't gate my toms. So there you have it, words from 
a true engineer. The reason I say a real engineer is sometimes I feel like we forget what that actually means. Being experimental, trying out things that you've never heard of on a whim or maybe an idea just pops into your head. So next time that you are recording or tracking, try something because you never know what the result might be. We're all just trying to innovate and make the next perfect snare sound. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank Mike for coming in as a guest today. Yeah, thanks for having me in Miami and it was great doing this with you. Yep, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time. And tap that bell for notifications when a video drops, you know the location. Till next time, I'm out of here. Mic drop, but you know I'd never really drop this thing, because it'd get really expensive. Later.